So we knew going in, it was on, you know, touchy ground in terms of, of, of uh, the religious right, definitely, you know, and um, that people would be ready to misunderstand our intention. You know, Marty said he wanted to make the film because he wanted people to sit down afterward over coffee and argue about it and, and make life, you know, Christ's story vital in modern terms, in modern day life, and present in our minds. Um, I think, uh, when I read the book when I was 19, and it was the first time I ever got the Christ story, I got what it meant to sacrifice, what the sacrifice meant in that story. Like, if you crave something, if you love life, and you want the honor of living life, and, and loving, and having children, and the honor of getting sick and dying, you know, the honor of life itself, and you give that up, if you really yearn for it, and you, have, you give that up, that's a very powerful thing. Like James Bond movies never touched me, never got me, because James Bond, at least until Daniel Craig, but before Daniel Craig, James Bond was never frightened. So I was never frightened for him, you know? This thing of Christ yearning to be human was so touching to me, and then the ultimate moment, which took till the end of the book and the end of the film for him to go, okay, I'm Christ, I, I'm going to die for your sins. It was so touching to me. Um, and then when I did Boxcar Bertha with Marty, he was just out at NYU, I could see, and that's a mad film, we shot it in four weeks, Roger Corman. Um, I could tell immediately that Marty was brilliant. I could also, learned quickly that he was also very religious. He, he was a, you know, an altar boy and, you know, he was very strongly Catholic. And I said to him, you should read this book. And he told me that I said, you should, you should play Mary Magdalene. And I don't remember that, but I probably did. And I didn't hear any more about it for years. And one day I'm reading the, the trades and I see Martin Scorsese's doing The Last Temptation of Christ. And I like yell out loud. And I call my agent, my hands are shaking, I've got to try out for this. And he made me try out for three months, three different sessions. He told me later that the reason he made me try out so hard was because he wanted to make sure he gave it to me for the right reasons, not because he felt obliged, but because I actually was the best one for the role. So anyway, in the end, I ended up getting it. But um, what was your question? Oh, how do we feel about the controversy? We knew, um, we called it the passion while we were filming. We didn't advertise that we were filming. We had hoped that it wouldn't be so extreme, but it became pretty extreme very quickly. You know, 10,000 people marched on Universal. Our lives were threatened. You know, we were at the uh, Venice Film Festival and we had to have bodyguards and a theater in Paris was, you know, firebombed and, um, you know, and a lot of these people were just doing the bidding of their their priests or whoever were telling them to do this. They hadn't even seen the film, and it was being used politically. I think it wasn't even by people who'd seen the film, but had they seen it, they would have been offended because that was their mindset in front. Now, now you just brought up an interesting fact that you were in a movie, but you're not sure if you've actually made the final cut. Is that a common thing? Yes. And how large of a role how large a role can it be where you have something out like that? Well, it can, I mean, I'm basically in one big juicy scene in this. It was really a good scene. And I just, to protect myself from disappointment, because I've had this disappointment before, I just think, are they gonna let the scene stay this length? Because they're always kind of wanting, you know, cut, cut, cut. Sometimes a scene that is longer but more involving involves you and then you're hooked in a way that's different like if everything is just superficially cut you know it's harder to get involved so but they often do that so i i just don't have faith that uh, they'll do it right and i sure hope that i'm wrong i sure hope they leave the scene in and because it's one scene you know in the natural my scene was cut way down that scene on the train is like cut way down it's like a regular guy but he has this incredible brain. Um, 
he would direct you, I mean, you asked, you know, do I take it home at all? I mean, that film in particular, I would go home just so relaxed because he would direct you for a scene, he'd direct you 10 different ways. Um, he'd have you go to extremes in different directions that really were surprising to the point where I had, and I never had this experience before, I had no idea what my character was gonna end up being because he had all this variety of takes. And I felt really used up as an actor when I'd go home at night because I felt like I'd been through acting exercises because I got to explore all these different versions of the character. But I had no idea until I saw the final film what the character would be like or what the film would be like. Interesting. Um, he didn't have a lot of money, we didn't have a lot of time, you know, a lot of pressure. He was brilliant. <laughs>